And go with the theme song. And dust. Hey everyone, it's a podcast. Podcast.com. And Jeff. Our theme podcast theme song. What? Joel's gonna sing the theme song. Theme song. This is the theme song. And we're done. Eat the final cocktail. Get comfortable and I gotta pee already. Pee break. <laughs> Ironically, I just peed Did like you? two seconds ago. You're, yeah. re- you're ready for the podcast. Ready then. for the podcast. Pee break is over with. Woo! Jeff, I always hear that you and I sound alike, and I actually mistook your voice for my voice in that. So oh, really? Now yeah. I'm a believer. Before, I think uh, both of our wives get confused when they call in. They always think we're the other person. Has, has that ever resulted in sexy mistakes? <laughs> Dude, we're married. There's no such thing as a sexy mistake. Right. <laughs> See, Jeff and I would have to be part of that equation for yeah. a sexy mistake. <laughs> so that eliminates all the sexiness. Mm. If our wives mistook our other wives for us, that might make a sexy mistake. Hi-oh. I think I saw a movie like that once uh, in a hotel. <laughs> oh, did you really? Yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> was it on your recent trip to Orlando when you watched <laughs> Hot for Words on... Uh, yeah, Your ho- hotel television. It was it was really bizarre watching uh, watching Hot for Words, uh, you know, on a HD TV instead of my little tiny YouTube window. You know the thing about the Hot for Words chick? I want to do her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want to put stuff in her. You know, I never, <laughs> I never get to the. Four, it's so romantic. The, yeah. To the four words part, <laughs> I'm always stuck. The, I get stuck at the hot. The what part? The, I get stuck at the hot part. The what? The, yeah, but what part don't you get to? I never even heard of that. No, oh, the words part. I see. Got me there. Yeah, yeah. Wop, wop, wop. That's, that's comedy. It's etymology made sexy, baby. Something about a Russian chick, too. Because you know they're desperate. You think that's what it is? Yeah, totally. She's Russian? Yeah. Well, it's kind of like they're all scary, you know, because you grew up with like <laughs> being afraid of them, and then you find out they're hot. It's yeah. like in the Sopranos. Yeah, and they know how to pronounce really long polysyllabic words. Nice. <laughs> see that? Look, Look at, at you. you. You've been watching Hot for Words, haven't you? channeling Tycho today. You read enough of Tycho's blogs, you just pick it up. Okay. Well, the the Tycho reference brought you guys to I know. a halt. What the fuck was like, that? Well, we were th- everyone was ready to talk about Hot for Words chick, and now we're, <laughs> now, we're, now we're talking <laughs> about Tycho from Penny Arcade. <laughs> talking about, I was I was talking I was yeah I was talking about fucking a Russian chick, and you bring up Young Donald Pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> here, here comes the bucket of ice water. Bam! <laughs> hey, so it's a she's a drunk tank. Yeah, hey, did you see that? Speaking of Tycho, did you see that uh, those guys who do the Mario Marathon where they play Mario every single damn Mario game ever made? They play them in a row for Child's Play and take donations. And they did it again this year? Yep. They dominated it. What did they end up with? I don't even know what their total was. I didn't realize they were done yet. I think they were like, when last I checked, I think they were like in the high teens. Did they have thousands. to beat each Mario game? Is that they the- 100%ed them, I think. Does like, that include, like, how deep does that go? Does that include, like, that PC-only Luigi time machine, t- like, time travel game that came out during the NES days? That was a PC game? Yeah, I have, I have it for the PC. I wow. can read you all the titles right here if you'd like to read I'd like to. Like I would love them. to hear them. These, these guys raised $28,000 okay. for Child's Play. How awesome is that? Okay, hold on one second. Can here. they raise $28,000 for my home renovation? Here's what they played. Here's what they played. They played Super Mario Brothers. Okay. They played Super Mario Brothers 2. Oh, I played that one. They played Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario World, Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine. Oh, Super Mario, Mario Sunshine. Yeah, Super Mario Galaxy. Okay, then there's different levels. If they got different levels of donations, they would have to do certain, you'd like this, Jeff, like achievement levels. Sure, sure. Uh, they 100%ed Super Mario Brothers, which sure. I guess means played every level with no warping and stuff like that. Same with Super Mario Brothers 2. They 100%ed 64, World, Galaxy. They played Mario Paint Rick Roll. What the hell is that? Well, I know what Mario Paint is. Did they have to make like a Rick Roll video using it or uh, something? It sounds like they Rick Rolled their own audience, which, you know. We'll for- they're, they're raising money. We'll forgive them for that stupid shit. Uh, and then they did Mario Dance, Mario Dance with Costume, Mario Paint Rick Roll Dance. Some stuff I don't understand in here. Who cares? The point is they raised $28,000. In other news, the Hot for Words girl raised 28,000 boners yesterday in my pants. See, this is what we need a soundboard for. The I wah, 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 wah. Wah. Dude, I don't want to talk about video games. I want to talk about hot chicks. <laughs> All we ever do is talk you're, about you're, video you're games. You're in the wrong is office. That true? That's not true. We don't always talk Some, about video Sometimes games. we talk about Star Wars. We've talked about Cheryl Hines. I, I start off every podcast by mentioning a hot chick. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's that's right. I'm Jeff Ramsey. He's the Hot for Words chick. 
And I'm Gus. Okay. There, there we go. We got that out of the way. With only took five minutes. Jeez. I'm Tycho Brahe. <laughs> Hottest so, chick around. So y'all ready for Comic Con next week? Yeah. Fuck yeah! Why wouldn't I be ready? Because it, it's 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 an undertaking, my friend. You're going out there early too. You're going to be in, in Southern California for a long time. Yeah, I am. I, I'm going to be out. In, it's going to be like a Southern California kind of month for me. Because then after we come back from Comic Con, we go right back out to do some Los Angeles business stuff as well. Some business. Sounds yeah. good. You're going to be eating some sushi. No, I, I killer shrimp. Killer shrimp, man. I go to this place in uh, Marina del Rey called Killer Shrimp, which is basically a bowl of awesome with a huge loaf of bread as a side. That's, I mean, that's the only location left, right? The Marina del Rey. Yep, one? Yeah. yep, yep. It's too bad. There used to be some other ones. Like in I know my geography. I have a great sense of direction. It turns off when I go to Los Angeles. I do not understand the layout of L.A. at all. It's a fucked up town I had in the, any way. I had the hardest time until we did like a billion commercials out there, and now I feel like I'm starting to get a grasp on it. Yeah, I have Santa Monica down. That's about it. <laughs> and I know where all the important In-N-Out burgers are. There you are. That, that's What else you need to know? Yeah. Well, the thing about L.A. too is that everybody drives. You ever see the movie Swingers where they all go in separate cars to parties? Mm-hmm. That's exactly how that town works. If people ever rode in the passenger seat of another car in L.A., I think you can actually get a ticket for that. <laughs> and it would also take, like, you know, 80% of the cars off the road if anyone, you know... Their HOV line, lane is, like, one driver and a bag of groceries, and then you can get in the HOV lane. <laughs> Everyone should ride motorcycles in L.A. A lot yeah. of people do. Yeah. A lot of people do because they can lane split in California. Yep. That's really cool. I wish we had that here. I do, too. Not that I ride a motorcycle or anything, but I like opening my door in the middle of traffic. Okay, what is that? Why do people get upset about lane splitting? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't get upset. Y- yes, you do, though. No, yes, you I do. Don't, I don't. But there's, that, there's, there's a reaction when you're sitting in traffic and a motorcycle goes down the middle of two cars, splitting lanes. Hence where the term comes from. Maybe maybe you get angry. I don't. Maybe she have the hot for no, work. I, tick. I think Tell Bernie's us. right. I think you do get angry. I think people in general get angry. I'm not saying you, Gus, specifically. Uh, okay. I'm okay. saying... I think they feel like that person's getting over, but in the end, that person's just reducing traffic levels for everyone. They're doing us all a favor. And it's legal. And it's legal. Yeah, it's, it, there's a reason why it's legal. It's because they want people to do it. Yep. Get a goddamn motorcycle, you know, and, and go down the middle of traffic. Makes sense to me. Hell yes. yeah. Hell yeah. With, Absolutely. With authority. And plus, you know, you can complain about traffic all you want until you see traffic in foreign countries. <laughs> and that is that gets a little ridiculous, man. Like some of those videos online about Indian traffic jams where street lights are just kind of... You know, they're there, but they're just kind of pretty lights, and that's it. Yeah, when I was in Kuwait, uh, stop signs and traffic lights are suggestions. They're yeah. not required. Nice. It's nice. pretty, yeah. Uh, have you ever seen videos of the uh, of traffic in North Korea? No. North, North Korea? Yeah, the, they, they don't have traffic is the point. But they don't I, have cars. Well, <laughs> that's another point. They build giant roads for very few cars, and since they have a lot of trouble with electricity and power, they don't have... Street lights. They have women in like little police uniforms out in the middle of every intersection, like pointing and telling cars when they can go and when they can stop. Whoa! They have people directing traffic. Yeah, because they don't have power for street lights. That's what we should do. That would employ some people. Get them out there. I mean, I, I, how many times are you sitting in a red light when there's no traffic in either direction? You're just sitting there in your car idling. That's right. You know, waiting for your green light. You'd, I'd like to have a person there going, "Go ahead, take yeah. it easy, <laughs> Get move on. Forget, fuck this light. We're humans. I mean, you were people. We can connect." You keep going. <laughs> I, I got did, this. I did that yesterday without the help of a person in the intersection. <laughs> you ran. Right? I would just. I just lost. I wasn't messing with the radio. I wasn't using my phone. I was looking straight ahead, and I thought, "Wow, that dude's jaywalking. I'm gonna hit him." <laughs> oh no! Wait, I'm running a red light, dude. I do that so much. Be, I, was, like, I was. I was at Sixth and Congress. I drove between cars. I'll be on my way to like your house, like your old house over on the, uh, you know, like Austin that area. Uh huh. And uh, I'll wake up in Buda. I have no idea how I got there. <laughs> I used to I used to do that when I would drive. If I got near my house, I would all of a sudden end up at my house. I'm like, I wasn't going home. Yeah. Why did I make this right turn? <laughs> it's like gravity. It's just drawing you in. But I don't do that as much as I used to, like when I first started driving. I had bigger problems with that when I first started driving, like getting in those little pathways. You know, I guess now I just drive everywhere constantly doing goddamn errands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like if you get the phone call from your wife or your girlfriend, if you don't have a wife, and she's like, are you about to leave work? Always oh. say no. Or say, yes, but I'm I'm already in our neighborhood or whatever. Because, <laughs> goddamn, there comes the list, right? I need you to go to Bed Bath & Beyond, and I need you to get bamboo placemats. And not bamboo, not the ones that are... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and, really, and I was in Bed Bath & Beyond the other day, and, I mean, Beyond really just means kitchen, right? I mean, there's I- the... <laughs> yeah. The bedroom, the bathroom, and the kitchen section. Why do they call it Beyond? It's catchier. 
It sounds cool. Because uh, kitchen doesn't start with a B. There you go. That's, that's a good point. Bed, that's Bath, and Kitchen point. doesn't end up in all the Adam Sandler movies. Yeah, yeah. Bed, Bath, God, and Beyond, you, that's where you go. You beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Click wouldn't have happened with, with Bed, Bath, and Kitchen. I like yeah. the concept, though, of finding, like, you could find really w- crazy shit, like, extra dimensional stuff in the Beyond section. That would be great. <laughs> go figure out Christopher Walken's the one selling it. <laughs> like that, dude, that dude's extra dimensional to begin with. This is broadcast, and people listen to this, but I want you to know that when we talk in the office, factual accuracy, not important to me at all. Yeah. Right, I, it's just, it's just stream of consciousness. Christopher Walken was in, yeah. Christopher Walken was in Star Wars, and this is the story that happened. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, you, you just said Star Wars, and that made me think about something. Um, did it make you think about Star Wars? Yeah, it did. <laughs> what a fucking coincidence! The other day, I read a story on Slashdot. This didn't get picked up. This did not get picked up on Dig. But apparently, when Skylab burned up and re-entered the Earth's atmosphere back in 1979, uh, you know, there were bits and pieces of it thrown all over Western Australia. And this town in Western Australia fined NASA $400 for littering because Skylab fell on their town. Fuck them! Free satellite, dude! <laughs> Why are they charging us? <laughs> and apparently, I guess NASA never paid the, uh, never paid the fine. Did we get it back? <laughs> no, I think they, they put like the remaining pieces up on top of a bar. Sell that shit on eBay. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah, I, I think so. I saw what an first. awesome bar. And uh, So I guess like some DJ just found out about it and paid NASA's 30-year-old $400 littering fine. I think he's their mayor now. Did he pay it with interest? No, oh, no. Well, the dollars dropped so far, he actually went up in value. The Australian <laughs> dollar. The dollar we do. By the way, if something lands in Western Australia, how the fuck do you tell? Because everything in Australia is on the eastern coast. Sydney and Melbourne and all that. And then Perth, which is way the hell out in the western coast. There's really nothing in the middle of Australia. Just internment camps? Yeah. Well, Aborigines. What? <laughs> internment camps? Yeah, what dude. About- <laughs> they, lock pe- they lock people up there. You got a fucked up version of Australia. You better be careful what you say. They'll get you. No, uh, and if you're listening from central to western Australia, I apologize for, you know. <laughs> yeah, to, we, we apologize for where you live. Yeah. Al Franken's going to run for Senate <laughs> in western Australia. You know, people got really upset about that. And in the comments of our last uh, Drunk Tank post, there was a very heated political debate. I don't know if you kept up on it. Yeah, people people like talk about politics. What yeah. was what was the Good debate about? Um, uh, the people were debating Al Franken's politics. First of all, I was wrong. He lived in Minnesota for a very long time. He was born in New York and moved to Minnesota and lived there for a long period of time. So he did not just move there to get his Senate, Senate seat, as I was insinuating last week. So, Al Franken, we know you're listening. We're sorry. And by insinuating, I mean saying directly. <laughs> <laughs> but we still like Jesse Ventura more. No way, dude. I bought all Al Franken's books and everything. Did you? Fuck yeah. Sniglets? <laughs> Al Franken didn't do Sniglets. Oh, it's one of those people. I don't know. <laughs> We're doing. We're, 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 this is like the wrap up show. Yeah, <laughs> like the first twenty podcasts or whatever. Thirteen. So it, you know, you talk about reading slash dot, right? Yeah. I have. I won't say on what website I subscribe to slash dot's feed, but it's a certain website, and I get slash dot updates. I forgot how great that site is. It's a good site. Uh, it's a great site, and they have lots of cool information. The people who post on slash dot are actually intelligent people. You won't see any tech speak on Slashdot ever. And they had a really cool uh, article just the other day. Like you said, what was the satellite you said that crashed in? Uh... Skylab? The space station. S- the space station. Did you know they are going to decommission and deorbit the International Space Station in 2016? I also read that on Slashdot. I read that on Slashdot too. Wh- what the fuck? Why we, are we... We spent like 20 years building the motherfucker to finish it and de- deorbit it after seven? I thought the whole point of this thing is that is that it's going to go up there. Why would they need to deorbit something? Why not just keep it in orbit? Probably to save money on the maintenance and the constant upkeep. Maintenance? I guess so. I'll say, what's, what kind of maintenance do you need in space? <laughs> <laughs> you know, constantly having to shuttle stuff up there. <laughs> That's not a harsh environment in space. It's just radiation across yeah, micrometeors. For, for some reason, uh, the, the farm just didn't pick, up, pick off like they thought it would out there. You know, I, I, would assume, I would have assumed that the space station would just be riddled with holes by this point from meteors being outside. It's outside the atmosphere, right? Completely outside the atmosphere? Yeah, I believe so. So... You know, I mean, you always have this idea that the atmosphere protects, or I have the idea that the atmosphere protects us from these constant meteor barrages, but maybe that's not the case. No, I mean, I don't think there's barrages, but there's definitely lots of objects. But, you know, it's like we've talked about in the past, space is so vast yeah. that the odds of two objects colliding are very minuscule. Yeah. Unless you're in a low Earth orbit where like, everything is. It's like two particles of dust colliding in your city, basically. Yeah. Two, two specific ones. Two very specific particles. I heard that happen last week, actually. No. It did. 
I read about it on statesman.com. So did anyone play uh, Battlefield 1943 last night? I played. No. I no. did not play last night. Not, yeah. I stopped playing shortly after we, uh, we, and by we I mean the fucking awesome Xbox community, unlocked the Coral Sea map. Why'd you stop playing? I, I, I only played for like half an hour last night. Because I played the Coral Sea map. <laughs> 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 that was kind of a big fuck you, wasn't Kind it? of a letdown, yeah. Well, you know, I will give the Coral Sea map credit for um, teaching me how to fly a plane. I didn't really know how to do it very well till. Yeah, you could have uh, done that at any point, though. <laughs> yeah, you, didn't, that. you didn't need the Coral Sea map to do that for you. <laughs> could have done that in the tutorial. So I went back to Fallout instead. Mm. Like a scratch effect. Like t- t- tutorial. <laughs> it, it was totally worth it. Fallout and I had a beautiful evening together. So uh, you're like level 11 now, I think I saw? I think 11 or 12, yeah. Wow. I, I leveled twice last night. That's cool. It's pretty cool. You know, I don't like to brag, but it's very cool. I'm cool for doing it. Yeah, you took the greedy achievement, or the greedy perk, though. I did. I was a little drunk last night, wasn't paying attention, and I took that perk that makes you insta-level, which, as soon as I did, it was like, oh, that's probably a dumb idea. But I'm going to, I'm, I'm a little so mistakes. Le- you hit level what? I think I hit 10, and then went, oh, I hit 11 and went straight to 12, I think. Or something like that. You know, you, you burned an achievement thing by doing that, too. What's that? Well, you could have used that to level up. Oh, yeah. You know, to yeah. get the achievement and then back it up. Fallout is one of the rare games that um, achievements are really far on the back of my mind when I'm playing it. Like wow. I just have so much fun playing it that I'm not even thinking about them. And I figure I have enough save games where if I fuck anything up, I can always go back. Well, how noble. I've got like Look nothing noble about it. It's just an awesome game. You're in touch with the spirit of the game. But I'm, <laughs> <laughs> that's the spirit awesome. of the wasteland. But I'm like I'm like a level I guess eleven or twelve and I have like seventy five saves so far. So yeah, I, those things will fill up your hard drive, buddy. Yeah, hey, yeah. You, you're on a memory card. I'm on a five hundred twelve meg memory card. I filled it. Yeah, so I had to empty it out. Wow, yeah. just with Fallout saves. Just with Fallout saves. It's nuts. I also uh, I went back to that train yard. I got a billion emails from people saying that I witnessed that uh, random event or whatever. Oh, no, fire lance would be there. The fire lance would be there, and so I went back, and sure enough, I had missed it. The fire lance was sitting there floating in the air, waiting for me. <laughs> All right, you know what? This is almost a year-old game at this point. I yeah. know they have DLC coming out. Coming out next month. Let's go back to talking about Battlefield 1943. Get some more recent game. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I just want to say, before we wrap that up, though, Mothership Zeta drops August 3rd. I was 8th. No, August 3rd. I, I thought it was the 8th also. I just uh, got it updated this morning. Oh, sweet. It looks cool, too. Yeah. Can't wait. And it's going to be the Fun final game. DLC for Fallout, right? Who, who did they... They sent you screenshots, Gus, of that? Yeah. And the the then you showed them to me and they were like screen. Can we talk about this? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, they, it's public. Okay, they, they they had screenshots of like being on the mothership and like fighting aliens and stuff. Fuck yeah, dude! So. And I'm sorry, they, I didn't mean to cut you off. Do you anything else there, say you want to no, talk about? No, nothing. There was that one cool shot where you're standing over what looks like a cannon pointed at Earth, and you can see the whole Earth through the bottom of the spaceship. Oh like, snap! Through space, it's incredible. Space cannon. Yeah, space cannon. They should like, like Star that. Wars. Yeah, just like the ISS. That's so, what they should build on the ISS. A big fucking cannon. How do you know they haven't? I, Have I you been to the it. ISS? I would point it at people. I'd be like, fuck you, I got a space cannon. Point at the Hot for Words chick. That, uh, that Fire Lance is an awesome gun. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is. It sets motherfuckers on fire. So, Bernie and I are so jealous of you. Why don't you guys, you guys could get it, I'm sure. What's that? It's random. Oh. Uh, that sucks. Did you get it? I you have got it, yeah. it. You just said you got it. Oh, I, son I, of a bitch. I already burned through all my ammo on it. <laughs> you idiot. You idiot. I used it last night on the GNR mission. You fucking used fuck. it at level 12? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. You know what? If you get something in a video game, just use it. Don't save it, you know? Just, yeah. just use it. I can go to the alien crash ship and get another 100 rounds or whatever for it. Oh, that's true. You haven't even been to the crash ship. I, have a, okay. I, only, had, I only had like 24 because it's only... Oh, the, okay. The I thought, s- I thought you had the 100 from the... No, from no, the no, no, no. I'll go get them at some point. Sorry. I t- I'm sorry. I totally missed you saying that because I was trying to get back to Battlefield 1943. But congratulations. You have a, a <laughs> unique you. weapon in Fallout 3. That's awesome. It's exciting. And anyway, speaking of Battlefield 1943... Awesome. Awesome. Man, you know... I, I talked a lot of shit about that game for the first couple of days because I couldn't play you it. You really did, man. Bernie yeah. and I were just sitting here smiling and playing. <laughs> but, uh, no, we weren't. We were just smiling and trying to load the fucking game. Once you get no, in, though, you're no good. No one was playing, but god damn. Yeah, that game is so much fucking fun. That was really weird, and but it's not necessarily a bad experience because you were trying to get into the game, and it was clearly overloaded on the first day that they made it available. First, like, three days. Yeah, yeah but I mean, the first day it was, like, impossible. But if you did get in a game, it worked great. It wasn't super laggy or anything like nope. that. And once you were in, you were set, and you would keep getting into new games every time. Yeah, you stayed, You didn't like get ejected after a game. You could stay there for seven hours and get your spot. You just had to make sure you were there to, make, to hit A and not get auto-kicked right. after 60 seconds. I had played the hell out of that game. How many hours have you played it? Uh, I think according to the stats in there, about 24 hours. Holy shit. Which is play, play time. In a week, in yeah. In a week, that's nuts. That's like, yeah, that's like three hours a day on average. A little bit more. I think I've only played like six or seven. Yeah, yeah I'm around there. I'm uh, like maybe ten. 
Uh, and a match lasts about 15 minutes. But to me, that was... I, I kind of got out of video games for a while. Like, I grew up, you know, playing... Really, for me, it was like Atari and, and ColecoVision and stuff like that. And then I played some Commodore games and some PC games, Apple games, uh, and got out of it. Like, I wasn't a big part of, like, that whole NES Super Nintendo generation. I got back in around the N64 and started again, started playing games again. And that was about the time Battlefield 1942 came out, a few years after that. And that was a, that game was huge. Oh, huge. yeah, dude. That was, I mean, there was a time when every night we would get together after work at our tech job and we would play 1942 and the same demo of uh, Soldier Fortune over and over and over again all night. Okay, Soldier Fortune 2. The, I Soldier Fortune 2. Those are the two games I remember that rooftop level we'd play over and over again on Soldier Fortune 2. We'd play yeah. Sold At and we'd play 1942. And it's we, not like for about a year. And That's then Bernie and I played the Rainbow Six games, but I don't think you ever got into those. No, nah, I was never big in Rainbow Six. You know what? That was kind of like me and Gus playing Rainbow Six, it was kind of like you and me playing Raw. Same kind yeah. of thing. Same kind of thing. It's kind yeah. of like the game that I the game that I played with Gus. You know, we played so much Rainbow Six that it gave me a hemorrhoid. <laughs> That's yeah, true. True story. He had to come into work and tell me that I was his manager back then and say he couldn't come in because... I, 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 I couldn't sit at my job anymore. I tried. I was there for like an hour. And I was like, God damn, I cannot sit and do my job. <laughs> at, at the time, I was living on a... This uh, apartment with uh, concrete floors and my computer was on the floor because I was too cheap to buy a computer desk and... Sitting for hours on end on the concrete floor playing Rainbow Six is not good on the butthole. <laughs> Apparently not. And, and when, as a manager at a company, when one of your employees comes in and says, A, they're having a female problem, or B, a dude, and he's got a hemorrhoid, it's instant. <laughs> okay, that's great. Go take care of yourself. <laughs> yeah. You know. I had to lay on my stomach for like fucking three days. After all right, that. all right. We got Jesus. it. <laughs> your butt hurt. We understand. <laughs> we need the hot for words. shit to come in and give us a damn homonym for a hemorrhoid or something. <laughs> <laughs> Back to less disgusting things. Gus, did you get the uh, the uh, uh, best squad achievement yet? No, I have not. Battlefield? That's, no. That's a glitched ass achievement. It is. It's bugged. Yeah, it I'm, is bugged. I'm positive. I've I've been best squad on every map at this point. Well, you can even see the 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 postage stamp. Little tell you essentially, mm. which is this is to get you get in a squad in the game, and you can have up to four people in your squad, and you basically you don't really have anything other than that you can spawn together. Right. And well, I think you can talk to each other. Well, oh, is that who you talk to in yeah, the game? Yeah. In invoice? Yeah, and your squad leader can, you know, assign locations Objectives, to attack and defend yeah. and stuff. Yeah, if you don't have... But you can talk to each other, so that's yeah. way more valuable. But, um... And then then at the end of the game, they will award top squad. And it seems weird how they assign that. That I, seems bugged in itself. I think itself. it's just point total amongst the squad. Yeah, but that's not always the case. Because I've, I've been in games where top squad was one dude who had a lower score than me, and I'm in a squad. Hmm, maybe it's average score? I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, the... Uh, that the, game's got bugs in it. Like, when you go to leaderboards and you compare with other uh, people... Yeah. You, yeah. Once, you on, get, once you get past the first page, all bits are off. Yeah. The game has flaws. But it's a great game. It's a fun, fun game. And if anybody's having trouble getting that best squad uh, achievement, <laughs> everything I've read online and from my personal experience, the best way to get the best squad in every map achievement is not to be in a squad at all. <laughs> I, got it for coming in, I got it for coming in fifth place on Wake Island... <laughs> Not in a squad. Well, congratulations. It just popped up. So, And just so you know, I got it. I was in a squad, and I had gotten top squad dozens of times, it felt like, on all the maps. And Iwo Jima was the one I was in top squad the most. And then one time, I got top squad in Iwo Jima and got it on that round. And it, it was probably my you know, eighth time getting it on Iwo Jima. So yeah. there's, no, I, there's really no explanation for it. I'm going to RVBTO this weekend. This is my first trip to TO. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Toronto and the TO event. What should I expect? I still what should I look out for? I it? still have not given up on going. Yeah? I, even with everything. RVBTO is an event I always want to go to, and it, it's always right before Comic-Con when we have about a billion other things going on, so it's very yeah. difficult for me to bust away or Matt to bust away. Yeah, it seems like they, they really put the dates back to back this year. <laughs> yeah, they're right Could, there. Couldn't have gotten much Literally, closer. yeah. But what are you asking? What should you do? Yeah, what, what should I expect, having never been there before? Uh, it's awesome. Is there any places I should eat or anything like that? No, they'll have everything. They do everything. I mean, they got the whole thing planned from morning to night. So. Expect lots of Tim Hortons. I'm, it's Toronto. You should call Ed. I'm not good with plans. <laughs> you should call Ed, call Ed and talk to him. Ed's doing a new album right now. Oh, I don't want to bug him if he's in the studio. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you stop by, you never know. I mean, that's kind of that environment where... You know, just take him out to break him away and take him out to lunch or something like that. Yeah, take, him on, that. take him on a date. I, I was reading. <laughs> I was reading that they're, they're recording their first their, their first album without Steve as a, as a quartet. Is that the right way to say that? Sure. And um, 
they have a big green egg in the studio outside, and they just like basically cook meat all day and record songs and <laughs> go out and have ribs. You say they have a big green egg? You know, yeah, what, you know what that is? Don't it's, you? it's a it's a special kind of grill. It's a big ceramic, like egg, like a big green looking ceramic grill, right? Yeah. And supposedly this thing is like you can set it to a it's a wood burning grill, or I guess you know it's not gas. You can charcoal or wood or whatever you want to put in there. And the airflow is like just right because it's egg shaped, and you can set the temperature, right and you could cook things for like eight hours, twelve hours. I've never heard of this thing. Oh um, yeah, Bernie was a, was going to buy one for a while. That's all I know about it. It was always like he always had a window open on his desktop. Hmm. I was. He was always like almost pulling. You know the thing that Bernie does where he's convinced <laughs> he's going to get something, and he spends a month looking at it, and then forgets about it and moves on. I, that was I one am, of those times. I am a very thorough consumer when the, it comes to buying. The best anything. is the best is when you do that for airplane tickets. Yes. And then we have to go somewhere and we don't have plane tickets. Uh, yeah. I hold plane tickets for reservations and I hold them thinking, well, we might not need them. And then we they expire and we have to buy yeah. more expensive that, That's ones. why I ended up having actually to take over travel for the company. Is that why? Yes, yeah, because you weren't booking us. Is that you why? You just stare at, the, stare at the, the holding screen. Who saw Moon? I didn't see it. Have you seen it? No. God damn it. I want to see that movie. I want to see it. Jason saw it. We, <laughs> should, go, we should go see it while we're at Comic-Con. Yeah, yeah fuck I'll it. Go see it. We should go see Moon and Harry Potter. You know what I just learned about Moon? What's that? It is directed by David Bowie's son. Hmm. Did you know that? Sam Bowie? <laughs> yeah, no, Jim Bowie. Jim the, guy, <laughs> the guy who invented the knife. You know what I found out about Moon? What? Not actually filmed on the moon. <laughs> wow. That's fucking amazing. Like, I don't know what happened. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> filmed in did, Detroit. <laughs> speaking of Moon, did anybody see uh, Bruno? No. 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 Not going to really have much interest in that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I'm really not that excited about it. I'm sure I'll love it if I eventually same here. see it. But. The marketing killed me. I just, I, like, I got so overexposed. Well, the problem is, I'm sh- I, I, know, I haven't seen the movie, I haven't really heard about it, but I'm sure it suffers from the same problem Borat did, where they can only show you about 30 seconds of that movie on TV without getting in trouble. Yep. Yeah. All the reviews are fantastic for it, but I just, like, every time I went to a website for the last four months, I feel like I've been staring at a Bruno ad. It just beat me down. Yeah. It was always that same shot of Bruno in the yellow like the layer hose. Yeah. yeah, looking over his shoulder. Yeah, exactly. Out. Yeah, it was constant. It was constant. It was. it was. It was like the only image on the front page of Dig for about a month and a half. Yeah, and all my celebrity gossip sites too. It's yeah, you read a lot <laughs> of those, don't you? Yeah, all day long. I got to be up on the pop culture for the comic. Got to lampoon stuff. <laughs> Interesting. You're using celebrity sites as a and, and justifying that as being work. It, it just, totally is. Justifying is the key word there. Absolutely the key word. <laughs> Because Jeff does two things now. He does the comic and he does Achievement Hunter. Not not just two things. But I do. Those are, a little, little something called Rivers of Blue. Yeah, main co- main content stuff that you're like the lead on. That's what you do. And it allows you to want to read gossip sites all day and play video games all day. Dude, this goes back to Drunk Gamers. When Gus and I sat down and said, we want to make a, a website, what do we like? What can, and we liked getting drunk and we liked playing video games. What can so I you do make that your life? here at the office so that I can watch porn and jack off all day? Uh, yeah. That's, that's the angle I need to start working. Come up with a... a fucking like a porn news site dude <laughs> jeff's gonna start doing liquor reviews next shit that, that sounds awesome <laughs> that sounds awesome it. and david bowie's son his apparently his name at one point was like zebop manuel or something you know sure. yeah, yeah like moon unit zappa or something <laughs> and he changed his name to duncan jones duncan jones duncan jones i'll look up his name right now on my is that the first movie he's directed moon I don't know. I just I didn't even know. I just found this out on the way to the office today that Duncan Jones is David Bowie's son. Da- I guess in Amman was his mom. Huh. He was uh, also known as <laughs> Zoe Bowie. Z O W I E. Z O W I E. Zoe Bowie. <laughs> oh, that's bad. I'm always curious about names of domains for websites that they pick. Okay. And where does Snopes come from? Does that mean something? I always thought it was like a, a playoff of Snipes. I thought it was a playoff of Snoops. I hmm. thought it was a playoff of Popes. Because they don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the hot for word chicks when you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, are we going to have, like, is that going to be a new thing? Like, the etymology of uh, domain names? I mean, it, it would make sense. Like, we, we talk about possibly even changing the Achievement Hunter name. And domain to something that's a little bit more palatable mm-hmm. and can be typed easier. Didn't you have it's uh, ins- insanely difficult to find anything? You, it you, is. You had an alternate name for it that sounded kind of gay. What was it? <laughs> uh, it was... Say it. Say it. <laughs> Say it. 
I'm trying to think of something funnier than the real domain. Say well, it. What was no, it's it? funny. Say it. <laughs> Say it. God damn it. I, you're making me laugh. I'm not embarrassed. I, I still own the domain achievemen. <laughs> 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 oh, man. That sounds I'm, like a achievement. motivational book for gay like, dudes. It's like a, I'm a, a dating site it. for gay men. Yeah. Achievemen. Achievemen. <laughs> achievemen. <laughs> if anybody's interested, hit me up. <laughs> I think I've got to register for another two years. Yeah, but it is. I, it, well, I heard at one point about seven years ago that every domain name that was four characters or less had already been registered. Every yeah. possible combination. I just heard a weird statistic. Uh oh. You know, swine flu got big here and then went away because yes. nobody gave a shit. What are you, what are you talking it, about? <clears throat> no, I'm saying yes, but uh, <sighs> come on, I'm a sire. I was actually sighing thinking about how it went away, but it's coming back. Right. Well, you know, it's it's becoming a big problem right now in Australia because this is flu season in sure. Australia, and this is now a global pandemic, right? One thing that they've noticed about this disease, statistically, is that it kills fat people. Whoa. Yep. Hmm. That's that's who's most at risk for this, and they don't know why. So you're walking around with a giant bullseye in your tummy right now. I don't want to put myself in the winter in a so higher risk group. Was this like biological warfare engineered to kill Americans? Is that what, <laughs> is that what we're discovering here? It's, a, it's an interesting thought. It's a very interesting thought. Black helicopters. Yeah, no I mean, kidding. if you're going to hit the heaviest people in the world, you're going to hit Americans. And Samoans. And Samoans. Houston's about to be very empty. <laughs> <laughs> and anvils. <laughs> if they can catch diseases. So swine flu will be back in the winter. Yeah. And we'll we'll wonder like, oh, what were you, you know, why I thought this went away. I thought it wasn't a big deal. And suddenly everyone, you know, it'll be in November and everyone will be panicking again and wearing masks and all that garbage. I couldn't buy fucking hand soap at the store when uh, people were scared of swine flu this last time. I'm sure Matt was hoarding it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dumb. What is that parallel? Something we've all read a science fiction story where a disease kind of came around and everyone got all hyped about it at first, and then it went away, and then it came back big. World War Z? World War Z! That's exactly right. Oh, uh, yeah. Booyah. There was a, that, that was a really prescient uh, channel, or chapter for that guy, where he talked about how the zombies kind of perked up, everyone labeled it African rabies, and then it was suppressed, and everyone just ignored it. It became kind of the background noise for the world until it reached that critical mass where it was everywhere all at once, yeah. and the world was taken over by zombies. Great book. Great book. I think we may have mentioned it a few times in the podcast before. We, we may have Possibly. mentioned it once or twice. It's like you know, it's like the new Bible. You know, I really hope that <laughs> we get a chance to play Left 4 Dead 2 at Comic-Con next week. Yeah, me too. I'm, God, I want to play it so bad. If, uh, I, I emailed Valve <laughs> asking if we could, and they ignored me. Did you email that other dude? That I yeah, sent? and I emailed the other dude, and he ignored me too. Damn. We're, we're, what we're, other dude? So, some other dude at EA who does marketing is having like some special event. And... So EA is releasing all Valve stuff, basically? Well, they, uh, I think they're publishing Left 4 Dead 2 on the 360. Is yeah. that correct? Uh-huh. So, so we're not going to get to play it? Does it? Well, they're not replying to my emails. I guess they, we don't do anything in video games. So, you know, yeah, we're, we're, not... Not, we're not video game journalists like those kids at Kotaku. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so we, 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 don't, we don't get to play video games. You mean where they, they go out. copy, paste, press release, click, <laughs> submit? God, maybe that's what we need to start doing. Maybe that's what I should, I get all the press releases. Should I just start fucking reprinting them? Sure. When they send you a picture of their swag, just put it up on the page and say, this is the stuff that's going to be in the collector's edition of the game. You know, go buy it and just pass it off as news. Just copy and paste it. Go for it. Then we'll, go, then we'll all be playing Left 4 Dead 3 before Fuck it, it we can out. We can release some mediocre content, too. You know what? Valve should have probably released Left 4 Dead as downloadable content anyway for free, in my opinion. <laughs> 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 now the bitterness kicks in. Um. Let's go, motherfuckers. <laughs> Jesus. You know, Valve, um, we talked to them. That engine, what's Source Engine, is great for machinima. And we had talked to them a couple of different times about doing something uh, in Source for machinima. They're just, you know, they're just not interested. They're not, you know, they're they're ignoring is kind of their MO. Well, they do what they do, you know. Yeah. And they do the hell out of it. And they do what they do very well. Yeah, I'm sure they're busy. We did, we did have we did we, I gotta say this though I really like the Gabe Newell the lead guy there because remember when we wandered into the to the, the I, Valve I, offices I wasn't there on that trip that was kind of interesting that was kind of interesting where we wandered into the Valve offices you know in the kind of the height of Red versus Blue just to say hello uh, and meet them and Gabe Newell came out of his office and just wandered into the conference room you know not because it's not because we were there but just like he saw people meeting in the conference room and thought what are they talking about I'll go in there 
And uh, it's like this random dude walks in. It's Gabe Newell, the guy who made Half Life. That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. They had a cool conference room too. It was all plywood, but oh, it, was, really? like, it was done in a way that was really really cool. It was almost like you were inside a shipping crate because the whole thing was plywood. <laughs> was it uh, sounds cool? It, 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 it's was the plywood to stained in any way? What's that? No, like it like had I, like rivets and all this stuff in it. Oh, okay, that's cool. Like those big like not like fancy rivets or anything, but those. Just pure silver, like Home Depot bolts. Sure, not but, fancy rivets. But the way it looked <laughs> was, it was fancy really, store bought rivets. <laughs> really cool, really, really cool. Sounds cool. And they had a they had a huge valve in their waiting room, like this massive valve, oil derrick valve. So it's pretty cool. So. Subtle, but fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> nice guys. <laughs> yeah, great guys. We want to play, play Left 4 Dead too at Comic Con. To touch on. Uh... Something that we were talking about earlier with the etymology of domain names, Gus. You told you were telling me you started to tell me a story this morning that I wanted to continue about the etymology of certain video game companies' names. Oh yeah, I, don't, I, I didn't want to mention that because I wasn't sure. You know, I haven't had a chance to fully research it and make sure it's uh, it's legit. But I was reading a story about the origin of the name Coleco for the company that made you know ColecoVision and video games way back when, and apparently they used to sell shoe leather. So Coleco was short for Connecticut Leather Company. That's bullshit. Really? That's what I read. I haven't I haven't verified it with an independent source, but read that this morning. Oh, Bernie's, I think Bernie's typing away I'm, I'm going nuts. Connecticut Leather Company. How do you spell Connecticut? C O N N. Spelled connect. I cut. Yeah, connect. I cut. Leather. Oh, it's up. It's one of the recommended searches on Google. <laughs> must be true then. Yeah, it must be. Was an American company founded in 1932 by Maurice Greenberg as Connecticut Leather Company. I guess wow. it, became a, it became a highly successful toy company in the 1980s, known for its mass-produced versions of Cabbage Patch Kids, 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 dolls, and its video game consoles, the Coleco Telstar and Coleco Vision. I didn't realize they did Cabbage Patch dolls too. I learned that when I read the Connecticut Leather That's Company. That's a thing. fucking powerhouse, the 80s powerhouse right there. It has clothes. Its properties and brand name have been sold. I wonder who owns that. Now, I wonder if we can buy that. I'm sure Google. <laughs> Do you hear the Amazon might buy Netflix? I saw that. Yeah. But they're interested in it. Somebody asked me on the site in my personal comment saying, you guys talk about Netflix a lot on the podcast. Is that a, is that a service that you would recommend? Absolutely. Right? Oh, hands down. I've been dude. recommending it for six years. Netflix is my television now. You know, since I canceled cable, I have Netflix streaming and Hulu and Amazon video on demand, and that's it. If you have an Xbox, there's no question that you should have some level of a Netflix service Absolutely. just to get the streaming. Yeah, Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. I yeah. Agree. I, I, I think I use Netflix streaming on my Xbox every day. I think every day I watch something. Yeah. Last don't, th- don't get me wrong. If you have to choose in your monthly budget between, say, a Rooster Teeth sponsorship for $1.50 a month or a Netflix account for $19.95... Clearly, you want to stick with the Rooster Teeth sponsorship, though. Yeah, Clearly. that goes without saying. Clearly, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, let's not let's not be well, idiots. <laughs> for me, for the for the price of uh, one month of Netflix, you can get a year of Rooster Teeth. That's a good point. Uh, in 2005, River West Brands, a Chicago-based brand revitalization company, reintroduced Coleco to the marketplace. In late 2006, they introduced the Coleco Sonic, a handheld system containing 20 Sega Master System and Sega Game Gear games. That makes sense. Why wouldn't you re- release ColecoVision games on that? Yeah. No. <laughs> Sega games. Sega Game Gear. What? Are, who put that deal together? We're going to revitalize the Coleco brand and use Sega games for it. <laughs> We're going to re- revitalize the Coleco brand with Game Gear games. Who has the uh, Cabbage Patch franchise now? Because my you daughter know, has a Cabbage Patch doll. Sorry to interrupt. That's another name that was on the list. Sega. Uh, it was uh, a company called Service Games. Really? Yeah. They. Uh, I guess the company started in Hawaii selling pinball machines to military bases, then moved to Tokyo because uh, after World War II. It started in Hawaii in 1940, moved to Tokyo after World War II because of military presence there, selling pinball machines, and then rebranded themselves to service games, and now they were Sega. So Sega started as an American company. Yes. Wow. It before World War II, and then after World War II, moved to Japan. That's crazy. Really? Just think about that when you're playing Battlefield 1943. I'm helping make Sega. <laughs> that's what I did. I'm playing an EA game that's going to lead to the Dude, creation of Sega. Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, we did have a conversation about we did have a conversation about actual D-Day. Yeah, we did. And how 
you know, it's hundreds of thousands of troops that are pitted in battle on these beaches, and you know, two generations later, we're playing it as video games. Yeah, and how how appropriate is that? Pretty inappropriate, I think. And we're like, wow, this is great. You know, <laughs> we're like, ha you killed me. Now I'm going to kill you. That, <laughs> that dude's leg flew off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, I shot him in the face. <laughs> we killed Russia. We get a new map. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, we got 43 million kills. I wonder how many World War II vets play Call of Duty. Dude, yeah, probably I, not. Probably many. not a lot. My grandfather, uh, well, one of my grandfathers was in Vietnam. The other one was in was on was there at D Day. And yeah, uh, Battlefield Vietnam sucked. <laughs> it did. No good, no fun. And they don't. They that don't, franchise derailed fast. They don't like to talk about. You know, <laughs> those days. <laughs> I've, I've never heard of an incident, though, of a veteran seeing a war-based game and having any kind of negative reaction to it. Like, I don't mean like some kind of, you know, state or trance. I mean a protest kind of a thing. Sure. Have you? No. As a matter of fact, my grandfather, who was in Vietnam, owns a PS2, and he plays SSX all the time. So maybe he just doesn't play war games. Oh, I think I met that grandfather. Yeah, yeah, I think I met him the first time he ever saw SSX. Yeah. It was a. Uh, he was so impressed with SSX that he went home and got it. <laughs> Played it a bunch. Sequels to Battlefield 1942 were The Road to Rome and Secret Weapons of World War II. Mm. I said, uh, okay. I said Secret Weapons of the Luftwaffe the other day. I don't. Yeah, that was remember. a LucasArts game. That was I don't remember either of those. Yeah, Flight Simulator. With great games, Secret Weapons of the Luftwaffe. Oh, they should release that on Xbox Live. Just like they probably they did, will. Just like they did Monkey Island. Fucking dude, I've been playing Monkey Island all morning to make an <sighs> Achievement Hunter video. I, I I was a console kid, so I missed out on that incredibly boring phase of PC, the point and click. No, games. that stuff was awesome. I mean, at the no. time, that stuff was awesome. No. Oh, well, that, it should Quest. stay in that time, dude. You know, uh, I read... I was, Inter- uh, do, do you want to touch the shovel? Why not? <laughs> you know, I was, I was reading about Monkey Island when I saw you playing it this morning. Were you playing, like, some kind of insult sword fighting thing? Yeah. You know, I, I saw that, and I was reading about Monkey Island this morning, and I read that Orson Scott Card wrote the insults for the insult sword fighting. Really, portion of the game. I will say that it's it's the voice acting is great. Not in the original game. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> and and it seems fairly cleverly written. It's just it just moves at a much slower pace than you're used to on an Xbox. Mm-hmm. Yes. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially after playing Battlefield 1943 for a few days. Right. Hey, why aren't we playing that right now? <laughs> you know, I played Sam and My- Max, which came out a couple weeks ago. Same kind of game. It was very well received whenever it came out on the PC, and. I had never played it, so I thought I'll download it. Same thing. It's just point on different objects on the on the page and try to get it to do funny stuff, and it's not interesting at all. Not yeah. interesting. If okay. you want to play a modern version of that, play the Penny Arcade games. You know that yeah. are done well. Like they have a combat system. They're fun. They're well written. They're a much better version of those kinds of games. Yeah, Absolutely, I mean, that Penny Arcade game was a lot of fun. There's a reason they don't make those games anymore. I mean, they just fell out of favor. Yeah, the Penny Arcade game is good though. Well, you're not like you're it's not trying to depth. find random objects on the screen to point and click and yeah, have some kind of dopey interaction. Now, now you have way more than like 320 by 240 pixels on your monitor. Yeah, it's, well, it's impossible to find stuff now. One cool thing about that Secret of Monkey Island game though is if you hit back at any point, it the screen reverts to the original to the way it looked like in like in 1991 when the game came out. It's all blocky and 8 bitty, and it goes over to text overlays, and you can g- zoom in and out like in the middle of conversations and stuff. It's actually kind of fun to see. That look cool. What's that? Yeah, it looked pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Awesome. I'd like to see that actually. Yeah, I like that historical stuff. Yeah, and they they do it really well, and it's like flawless. Like you'll it'll you'll like zoom in in the middle of a conversation, and you'll and they'll, they'll pop the, the the right text up, and you can be like mid sentence pop out, and they'll just like the transition's really great. Mm-hmm. So if you were going to recommend a game from say the '90s or earlier to end up on Xbox Live Arcade, maybe a cult hit, what would you want to see end up there? Populous. Populous, that's pretty good. Oh, that's an interesting one. Yeah. Or or how about Original Sim City? Original Sim City. The two D one, yeah. you know, just the planning one. I have a I have a lot of uh fun memories of stuff that involved flying, like uh Descent and Red Baron. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know if anyone played those. I remember also, Descent. Like we talked about secret weapons of the Luftwaft. Out of this world would be a great one for Out Xbox Live. That would be okay. interesting, yeah. How about Original Grand Theft Auto? What was that game you played that seemed like the sequel to Out of This World? Gosh, what was that called? I'm sorry. Go ahead. What did you say? The first I was going to say the original Grand Theft Auto. Yep. Star Top Control Two. God, uh, no, Star Control Two. That that wins. That that would be awesome. That would, that would just be having it. the melee with the ships on uh, that, that game still fun. Yeah, you can you can download that game for free and play it. Still fun. But Battle th- Battlefield 1943 is a big time game changer. Yeah, it is. Because that game is 15 bucks, and it really is a full retail game. It's you definitely get a, yeah 60 dollar value out of that game. Well, oh. there's, there's no single player, but. 
Who cares, dude? Already seeing people complain. I'm just saying that, that I wouldn't call it a full retail experience. It's not a sixty dollar game. I oh. think it is. I think it is too. I, I I played that game way more than I have played a lot of games I paid sixty dollars for. I really have. Look at most FPSs. I mean, like Call of Duty or Halo. You play through the single player once, and then you spend the rest of your life playing multiplayer. The single player is really just a primer to get you ready for multiplayer. Hmm. I think. You know? Yeah. I mean, Shadowrun was full retail. That's true. That was full. That was just multiplayer. How'd I they, wish that how, game. Had, how'd, how'd they do? I wish that game had done better. It was a pretty fun game, and the it, the balance system I thought was pretty interesting. I it was weird. They just the, the studio was shutting down as they were releasing the game, so they weren't going to market it. So yeah. nobody really knows about Shadowrun. You, they say that this Red Faction is is great for multiplayer. I just haven't had any time to play it. Yeah, everybody I know that's played Red Faction says it's fantastic, and it's like super addictive multiplayer. But hmm. you know, if we were actual gaming news and like a real podcast. We would all play different games. We all play the same goddamn games. <laughs> <laughs> we you, we all true. play Fallout. We all play Battlefield 1943. There's lots of great games out there that's like we never talk about because we just don't play them. All right. You know what? Well, I guess Comic-Con's next week. After I come back from Comic-Con, I'm going to buy a PS3 game. Nobody gives a what? shit. I'm going to talk about it. What? What are you going to buy? I'm going to buy Uncharted. Wait, wait. Let me mark my I'm, calendar. I'm going to buy a year and a half old PS3 game. <laughs> and then I'll talk about that. How great it is. This has been a, we've mentioned Penny Arcade many times this uh, this podcast, but Tycho just went off on home too, which I thought. Oh really? Yeah. He had a, he, it was weird to hear him say that one versus a hundred on the Xbox is like what home was striving to be. Yeah, I guess I, he was making a point that the avatar finally feels like it has a place in the Xbox, which I don't know, man. I, 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 the Natal thing kind of worries me because I just worry, you know, the whole avatar thing. It really hasn't done anything with the avatars yet. It's kind of cool. Well, I guess there's that kart racer coming out, you know, and uh, I'm saying it hasn't anything yet. Yeah, you know, it, it still has potential to do sure. some cool stuff. And one versus one hundred, he's saying, is the first real place for the avatar to be on the Xbox. And and I agree with that. In a sense, I can see that. You know, does uh, do, do those scenic games use your avatar? Um, I don't, I think, don't so. think so. No. Seen it? No. Uno does, and... I thought the new one might, but... Kingdom for Kelflings does, and Uno does, you know. Oh, does Kingdom for Kelflings, really? Uh-huh. You, cool. There's a whole section on arcade that you can go to that are listed as Avatar games. Oh. And uh, they went back and added it, the functionality of some really old game, like Hardwood Hearts and Hardwood Spades, but, you know, I, I it's just not... Overall, it, it kind of has made my friends list harder to navigate now. I end up now staying away from the dashboard and staying more in the pop-up jewel yeah i spend all my time there too the mini dash you know what i mean i find that much easier to navigate yeah. it looks cool i like the dashboard i kind of complained about it being slow for me last week but i like it i like the blades i like the way you navigate i kind of wish i would go to default as my xbox instead of the spotlight channel but i understand why they want to have the spotlight yeah channel i wish you could customize that a little more like i wish on the my xbox you could customize like i want to have like a quick launch for battlefield 1943 there and you know i want to be able to arrange those tiles the way i want it yeah that would be nice that would be nice. But they're working on it, and I can't certainly can't complain about the design of the 360. Fuck no, dude. Maybe some hardware stuff, but yeah, they've, they've done a great job with the design of it. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I can't tell you how much I love having a game that I can just, like Battlefield 1943, that I can launch from the dashboard. And it's an awesome game, mm -hmm. you know. In my opinion, a full retail game. Mm -hmm. You don't think so. But it really... No, it's still a great game. I'm not discounting the game. It's still a ton of fun. It's not a $60 game. Oh, I don't know. Bernie's put 24 hours into that game. That's right. more than you put into a lot of retail games. Yeah, but Hell it, yeah. it's still only three <laughs> three maps. And I think if that was yeah, a $60 shelf game, we would be complaining. What is it? Only... I wouldn't. I mean, what's it matter how many maps are? If it's, if it's three maps that give you a $60 value as opposed to 10 maps that don't? I mean, no way. Gus, Gus, you're right. Gus is right. Totally right. Uh, Gus is right. If it was a $60 game, I'd be like, this, what the fuck? Three I mean, maps. And, and it's, <laughs> it's also a little different. Like, people are going to say, well, Left 4 Dead 2 is only going to have four maps. It's totally different. The Battlefield maps are, like... Well, contained. four maps with five levels. Right. Yeah. Left 4 Dead splits up their maps and makes different levels. And plus, it's, it's Valve, really... and they're too cool to talk to anymore. Plus, it's four <laughs> maps now. I still think I still think Valve should have released Left 4 Dead 2 as an experience. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to stick to that story until they're nice to me. Maybe we should sign, sign some kind of petition. Make some We'd... change happen. We make no bones about it. We could easily be bought. <laughs> we just, <laughs> just, just have to, to show up and, and or send us a free copy of the game. Every game we've ever gotten a free copy of, greatest game ever made. Dude, Blink's the, the Time Sweeper. <laughs> Blink's the Time Sweeper. That's the best game I've ever played about a time-traveling cat with a vacuum on its back. That fucking... You remember that French M MMO they let us into <laughs> way back in the Drunk Gamers days? Jesus, I I love that, that game. I don't remember what it was called <laughs> or what French it was about. French MMO. But they gave it to us, and I loved it. 
You know, I will say this, though. They got our highest rating ever. Yeah. That 12 bl- out of 10. That Blinks the Time Sweeper game that they sent us for free, we have mentioned that. Fuck yeah, dude. How many times? Millions. So if they ever put Blinks the Time Sweeper on Xbox Live orig- or Xbox Originals, bang. You know. Yeah. Download. They'll get 15 bucks back out of me. Blinks the Time Sweeper <laughs> is kind of responsible for starting Red vs. Blue, then. For starting Rooster Teeth. It is. Kind of, yeah. Thank you. See what kind of great things can be caused by giving us free stuff? It's it's so weird that you mention that because just last night I looked up the original Red vs. Blue post on halo.bungie.org. And it, it was all drunk gamers. You remember the drunk gamers guys? They're back and they're making this Red vs. Blue thing. And we had actually posted the trailer to Red vs. Blue almost a year before we put up... I think we posted that trailer in August of 2002. Yep. And episode You're right. one came out in... April 03. Yep. It took us a long time to make that first episode. Like nine months. <laughs> we just stopped. We just weren't yeah. going to do it. We, we had other stuff going on. You know, had the idea. It's Drop. so funny, too. I was like trying to look at the evolution of it, and there's no mention of machinima at all. Like, <laughs> like as Red versus Blue is what machinima is, before we even knew what machinima was, that what we were doing was called machinima. And I was trying to find, like, what was the first instance of the word machinima being used on halo.bungie.org and I had to like drill for a while to find it and it was actually Hugh Hancock I was gonna say I was gonna say what did Hugh Hancock say yeah I was gonna say that it, it was Hugh Hancock talking about Machinima really yeah. on HBO yeah it didn't explain what the term meant or anything like that it's so. crazy and then it's like and then and then yesterday I think there were nine posts about that had Machinima in them the word Machinima in, in the actual post. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. That's, that's a terrible word. Way too many. <laughs> Polysyllabic words needs to go away. Remember, we made fun of it when we first heard it, that what we were doing was called Machinima. And it, it was originally called Quake Movies before, you know, before it kind of got kind of got bigger and, you know, people started doing more stuff on consoles. And um, <laughs> the uh, we heard the word Machinima. We thought, we're not going to use that word. That makes no sense. We're going to call it we do something else. And we're going to call it, what, Render Vision? Render yeah, Vision. We with a I still think that's names. a way better way better name. People look at the word machinima. No one knows how to say that. It, I didn't know how to say it. Machinima. It doesn't make... First of all, the word is wrong. Right. Machine and cinema, it shouldn't have that second I. It should be machinima. Like M-A-C-H-I-N-E-M-A. But then it's machine-ima. But cinema and machine... Both have that E in that place. There's no I, I there. I I'm not going to... I don't go to cinema. <laughs> cin- cin- you, go, you go to cinema? Cinema. cinema. <laughs> so, cinema. Anyway, so... It was, I thought it was interesting. I was taking this little trip down through that. And then I got on the Drunk Gamer site, the archive site, and I had made those 10 Halo videos before Red vs. Blue. God, were there 10, really? There were 10. I didn't know there was 10 either. I and, remember, uh, like, two of them. I remember you sniping someone out of a warthog. Yeah, it was awesome. I did my flat spin stuff too. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, the flat yeah. spin. Yeah, and um, and then there was just random gameplay stuff where I'd play with people on uh, GameSpy, which was I think excellent. Xbox at the time. Connect. Xbox Connect. That's what it was. Oh yeah. And uh, there was a lot of stuff in there. You know, I found my open letter to Angelina Jolie. Oh yeah. I found uh, still hot. My interview with my wife for Soldier of Fortune. I'm going to backpedal <laughs> for a second for people who might not remember what Xbox Connect was. Before Xbox Live existed on the original Xbox, if you wanted to play Halo over the internet, you had to plug into a router and use like a third-party piece of software on your computer to find other people using this software on their computer to kind of do matchmaking for Halo over the internet. And yep. a ton of people used it. And it was laggy, and it was the f- it was fun as hell. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody was undefeated. Remember that? <laughs> We're an undefeated team. We've never been beaten by anybody in Halo. You know, and then they would, <laughs> they would never the not internet. be host. Yeah, they would never not be host. That game really suffered. If You could not use the sniper rifle if you were not the host in those games. Yeah. But it was fun, man. It was a lot of fun. I, re- I really enjoyed those games. Back in my day, we had to suffer to play Halo on the internet. <laughs> 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 had to walk uphill with our packets. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was upstream both ways. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's the fucking joke of the week right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it just makes me wonder. You know what I mean? It was a lot different back then too. You even look at something like piracy, which we've talked about before. Is if people had to go through, you know, I mean, everybody thinks of themselves as like this big hacker, like they walk around with their fucking iPhone and their goddamn apps and their blogs. You know, where everything's basically cookie cutter for them. You just basically fill out a form, you know, and that makes you an interesting person on the internet. You know, yep. nobody even makes a goddamn website anymore. 
You know, if you look at like even like some of the shows that are out there now that are big on stuff, you go to the show and like say Fred on YouTube and you go to Fred's channel. He's number one on YouTube, number one on the number one network. And his website, nobody goes to his website. Nope, it's not even in the like top 100,000 sites on Alexa. Uh, I know, it's like, these are basic fucking fundamentals of, of getting stuff done. I guess, you know, there's a different path that people can take now where the internet is becoming like this farm system for other bigger things, you know, where I want to get noticed on the internet and I want to go off the TV or go off the movies, which, you know, good luck with that, first of all, <laughs> you know. But, but build a goddamn website, you know what I mean? It's just the same thing with learn, bands, learn too. Learn fundamentals. Everybody's fucking slam dunking, right, Gus? Nobody's yeah. dribbling. Gotta, gotta like, fucking get the, get the basics down. Every God. single band has a MySpace page, and that's their official website. And there's nothing worse than wanting to find out about a band and having to navigate through their shitty MySpace background and all that stuff. Want to find tour dates or, you know, how the band got started or whatever. It's why the MySpace pages, MySpace pages are so shitty looking. It's because these are people that can't build web pages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, know? you know, you're talking about everyone being a hacker and how... And things like that, and how cookie cutter it is. I read a fucking scary article the other day going back to Slashdot. Um, I guess there's this proof of concept hack out there where people can key log what you're doing on your computer through your electrical power outlet. What? I guess the keyboard connectors inside computers are unshielded. So as you're typing, the resistance going through the elect- for the electrical impulses for your keyboard generate tiny variances and fluctuations that affects your draw of power from the wall. So if someone else is plugged into the same breaker as you, they can plug in a special device and then plug it into their computer and have software interpolate, filter the noise out, and then get your key logs. Fuck, that's awesome. So, I mean, even just plugging your fucking computer in, if there's a hacker in the building on the same breaker as you, they can see everything you're doing. Dude, that's fucking nuts. I said this to my wife last night. Because my wife is a very conservative lady, and we tend to get in... I, I think of myself as being middle of the road, kind of leaning one way or the other on either issues. But she's talk, she, you know, she's in the whole Obama socialism thing, right? Sure. Which is kind of... You know, we have to have these discussions, like socialized medicine and all that stuff. You know, here's what's going to happen, you know. You know, doctors are going to be not be able to provide surgery. And it's like, there's no bill that says this, you know yeah. what I mean? There's right. nothing... You know, granted, we're on that road. We could head towards that. Anyway, whole political discussion we get into with my wife. But what I was trying to get with her with this whole socialism thing is that everyone's so focused on the political powers that be as being they're going to introduce socialism. Nobody's looking at what the internet is doing to the consumer mind, you know, for entertainment, for cost of goods, for, you know, just the way we spend all of our time and our value of what we put on a service. That's the internet is the most socialist thing you could possibly imagine. Sure. I mean, you have people taking stuff that in the real world has a price tag and a value, and they're telling you it has no value. Right right beside it, you know? Yep. Just in parallel, there's this whole socialist thing going on. And everything on the internet is free, and the moment something becomes paid, or God forbid even puts a fucking ad up to help pay for stuff, people are like, no, this is inappropriate. This is intolerable. <laughs> we cannot stand this, you know? Except it's a weird kind of socialism because it's like a few levels of participants – and then a lot of viewers, you know. Yeah, a lot of uh, you know. It's not. It's not. A, it's not even spread. You know, which is why sites I think go up and down. You know what? I for one welcome socialism and welcome Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my fucking spaceship, dude? I you know nobody's complaining when our socialized fire department shows up to put your house out. You know. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, <laughs> hold on. Did we turn into a socialist podcast all of a sudden? <laughs> Well, you know, firemen wear red for a reason. That's cool, all I'm saying. Cool your jets there, comrade. <laughs> that, that, that's the problem. Is the hot for words becomes like a gateway truck. <laughs> like, well, if fucking socialism can provi- produce Ivana over here. <laughs> what is her name? We should get her name right. Yeah, that's a good call. And, uh, you know, maybe it's not so bad. But I just thought it's not going to come. Changes don't come the way we expect them to come. No. Is what the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, of course. Very, very long-winded example of that. All right. Well, I think we should probably wrap up. We're going a little long here. I got to look up the hot for word chicken. Okay. What do you want to? Uh, what do you want to go for lunch today, Gus? Uh, we had Chick Fil A already. Yeah, I'm gonna have a real lunch though. Marina uh, Oriova. Oh, she's so. Pretty. Are, are there any weird accents in that name? Nope. No. No weird. They have upside, her name here upside written. down or backward letters. No, she has. She has her name here written in Russian though, and that looks that's crazy. You can totally see her boobs on her Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> how how old is that chick? <laughs> Twenty seven. 
Wah, wah. No, no way. way. <laughs> no way. Well, that chick is not 27. Maybe in Russian years. <laughs> What's the conversion rate on that? I bet the Russian birth certificates are written in pencil. What do you think? <laughs> that chick's 35, I guarantee you. Who cares? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But I don't think she, she doesn't appear to be 27. She's not a 27-year-old. But she is, she's awesome, super hot, and filled a, like found a niche that's like she's in there doing it perfect. I love it. I hope she's on the internet for 30 years. Absolutely. I hope she gets her own talk show where she just mentions words all day. I hope it's a video podcast. She's fucking awesome. Uh, anything y'all want to talk about before we wrap up? Yes. Mm. I want to talk about something I thought was a good idea story-wise. And you kind of mentioned it when you were saying Star Trek socialism. Uh-huh. Do you guys want to talk about your socialist leanings anymore? <laughs> I'm not a socialist. Do you want to have a meeting? And let's, share, like, let's share, comrade. Start carrying <laughs> cards where we can identify each other. Um... We have this notion that we contact extraterrestrial life, that we're going to get a radio signal, and we're going to come in contact with another planet, right, at some point. And that message will be very clear. It'll be a very happy scientific message, and we'll start communicating with people, and it'll be this wonderful relationship, right? Sure. What if, what if we contact a world that's like ours, and we reach this alien race, and there's these nations that are divided, and they're like, oh, don't talk to those guys. Talk to us. You know, like there's several competing radio signals from the same world. Like, if, if extraterrestrials contacted us, I could see that happening. Like, we would not provide a unified message of life on Especially Earth. Especially, like, during the Cold War, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, don't listen to the Americans. They think that, you know, they have this thing called money, you know, and <laughs> the socialists are crazy. They're all these, you know, groupthink people. It would just be interesting to, like, come across a world where they're split and divided, and that would seem so ridiculous from such a far perspective, you know? Yeah. I'm starting to sound like a socialist. <laughs> <laughs> One world view. But it's just, I, I just thought about that. Like, what happens if the first message we receive from an extraterrestrial uh, world would be a divided message? We receive competing signals. The from first the same message world. we're going to receive from an alien world is going to be a fucking laser bolt to the head. Yeah, probably so, right? God damn. If we ever receive a radio signal from an alien planet, I hope to God we do not reply. Laser bolt to the head, huh? Do not want to. Reply. What are you talking? We send out satellites that I have know, our DNA it, information. We're idiots. Yeah, pretty dumb. We're idiots. That's the dumbest thing in the world. Uh, here's how to destroy us. <laughs> here's our weakness. Yeah. Aim for the penis. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this, yeah, these are our soft parts. God. Yeah, that was that's crazy to think what could happen with that. Yep. Crazy to think. You know, I was uh, reading this uh, article Stephen Hawking wrote the other day about how intelligence is not necessarily the ultimate form of evolution. Like maybe intelligence is just some weird byproduct that's not very common as a result of evolution. And? Uh, his argument was that, you know, the jump from single cell organism to multi-cell organism and then beyond to even get to the point where intelligence can start forming takes 2.5, you know, in our case, took like 2.5 billion years. Which or is, seven days. Or seven days. Which is a Come significant on. chunk of the lifetime of an average star. So, you know, most of the time of, you know, that a star is burning, you have life that isn't even intelligent yet. Intelligence ends up being a small sliver of time in, uh, when you look at, like, a cosmos perspective of a world. Well, sort of kind of organic stuff in yeah, general. You, well, yeah, but if life starts That was my early scientific enough, analysis. Organic so does kind of organic <laughs> stuff <laughs> like, as well. So, you know. so his argument was that we, we may not find very much intelligent life in the universe because it might be just be a weird byproduct and not a destination. Or we might just be at the wrong window in time. Chances are that we are. Right. For that particular species. Right. Yeah, now nah, he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sam. He talks weird. <laughs> yeah, he talks, he talks like a robot. He's got a strange accent. He's Russian or something. I actually, I actually had a conversation with somebody the other day where they were anti-Stephen Hawking. Was it, <laughs> was it Joel? I think he was. Yeah, it was yeah, Joel. Joel came in. We were talking about Stephen Hawking and came in and like started spouting out how Joel wasn't even in the top 100 physicists. No, Stephen Hawking. Uh, Stephen, Joel, Stephen, Joel, Hawking's Joel, not. Stephen Hawking's not even in the in the top 100 physicists, but yet he, Joel couldn't name us any of the other 99 physicists. <laughs> <laughs> he's not so great. He's not so smart. It's <laughs> like, what's your problem with Stephen Hawking? He's like... It's basically boiled down to, he's just got good marketing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. That was Joel's defense. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. <laughs> so Joel, Joel definitely, gets the, uh, definitely gets the biggest laugh of the podcast, even though he's not here this well, week. So. It's too bad. Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> we, we had to walk upstream both ways. It was, uh, was pretty good, too. Oh, no. Marina Orlova has also appeared in numerous phone sex television advertisements. Oh, nice. That's blasphemy. That's Wikipedia. Somebody's smear campaign. Well, well, we can fix it. There's probably some chick like hot for syllables who's trying to like, <laughs> he's trying to bring her Discreditor. down. Discreditor. Yeah. 
It's like, yeah, she's original, but she's not the best. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've heard that before. All right. If she hadn't done it, someone else would have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff, anything before we wrap up? Nah, dude. See everybody in uh, TO this weekend. See and you on the Comic-Con. Uh, Comic-Con. I, should, I should give our booth number. We're going to be at booth 1437. Uh, we'll put a map up on the site so you can find us. It's yeah. our first corner booth. It's Very our first excited. corner booth. Yeah, look for us on a corner. That's a great way to find us. We're going to yeah. be right by the, the, the cafeteria food area, so yes! I know you all see us. Food court. <laughs> it means our, Joel can get a chicken sandwich anytime he wants. And yell about Stephen Hawking. Man, I bet he get the shit beat out of him at Comic-Con if he starts disparaging Stephen Hawking. Well, I don't know if it... <laughs> maybe the verbal shit beat out of him. <laughs> His shins will be bruised by the end of the night. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. TTFN.